Hey, it's Sabado. Who's Sabado? You know, Sabado, that retired cat. That's me. You know, my wife and I yesterday were driving around town and we were just hanging out, spending a little bit of time driving around town. And we were looking around. And as we went into stores and we saw people and people were coming by us and so on, and we were near some business parks and things like that. We started to look around and realized these people don't see us. And I couldn't quite get my hands on it because, again, being six foot eight, people notice me. My wife being beautiful and blonde and all of these things, people were looking at her. And we were in these places and nobody saw us. And then as I talked to some of my other friends about it, and my wife also said, she says, yeah, because when you're retired, you become invisible. And I thought about that for a second. Because for most of our lives, when we're doing work, on, uh, doing work implies that there's somebody that needs the good or service that you're trying to produce. And when you're retired, there's nobody out there that needs that type of production from you in the way that you've been conditioned to provide value over the past 20, 30, 40, 50 years. And that's a bit of a, a bit of a switch. Your value starts to come from different places. Your value starts to come from having some wisdom about you that may be able to help other people, being in service to folks, things people do when they volunteer. But I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make as human beings is we have and we have we, we have the inability sometimes to understand the impact that we have on other people. I know for myself, that's something that I've dealt with. Have, have you dealt with the same thing? I'd be interested to know. But I've done things, I've said things, I've disappeared out of people's lives thinking that, you know, I'm not really a big deal. I'm just, just Sabado. But what you find when you circle back around is that sometimes people are really hurt by, by some of those things and they seem fairly innocuous to us, but they have an impact on other people. But it's interesting because you get around these groups of folks like we saw when we were getting around town and people were really caught into what it is that they're doing on a day to day basis. And I'm not here to say that it's important. I'm not here to say it's not important. It's important to them. But if, if they're doing that then, then what's the rest of their world like? Are they spending their time focusing on what's right in front of them? Or are they taking time to, to smell the roses and understand what's going on in the rest of the world? Foster those relationships with people they need to foster relationships with. Seeing what's around them. Um, appreciating what we have in America. I mean, I think, you know, I'm not, I'm not on a, on, on a, political uh, tip right now. But, you know, one of the things I'll say is that as divided as we are and as many challenges as we have as a country, I still think the United States of America is the greatest country in the world because of stable government, because we have the freedoms to like or dislike something, because we have mechanisms to, to voice our concerns, because we are able to elect our um, political um our, our political representatives and things like that and so is there a lot of work that needs to be done sure there's work in everything nothing's perfect but i'd rather be here than most than most other places but but i think we get so caught up in the work that 40 50 60 hours of work that we lose sight of what's really important and what's really important to us is time have you ever really sat back and thought about what they're paying you for when you go to work? Because you're doing work that there's generally somebody else in the world that can do that work as, uh, equally to the level that you're doing it. In most cases, I'm sure we're all unique. We all have special skill sets and all those types of things. But the reality is, is when you leave a job, they find somebody else to fill you in fairly short order. And I know there's, there's staffing challenges and things like that but but things move on but that time that you have once you lose that time that time is gone and if there's anything that you get from from my channel is understanding the value of your time your time is valuable 
You are valuable. That's why when something happens and somebody breaks a law, what do they take away from you? They take away your time. I'm doing my time. I'm getting my time in because time is an unrenewable resource. It's the only resource you can't go out and buy more time. I mean, I'm sure at some point somebody's going to have some technology where you can expand your life and live a little bit longer. But the fact of the matter is you can't expand your, you can't get more time. So if you have the opportunity to appreciate that time, spend the time to appreciate that time. Otherwise, we're all going to end up in 1984. I'm sure you all remember 1984, the book by George Orwell, where you're talking, where, where everything got so compartmentalized, people weren't able to freely think, and it was just a mess. We don't want to end up there. We're on our path there. There's a lot of things going on in the world. Again, we won't talk about those today. Uh, but what we have to keep is our sense of what's important about us. We have to keep a sense of time is on our side. We have to appreciate the time. And in fact, if you in surveys that were done of people of their in their 80s and 90s, the number one things that they wish that they had done was taken more control of their time. Personally, I know there have been times when I was working. And I, I wasn't as aggressive or I wasn't as assertive as I wanted to be because I have to live with stereotypes. And so if I'm overly assertive or I'm this or I'm that, then I get tagged a certain way. And that doesn't just impact my ability at that job, but it impacts my ability to get another job and, and to feed my family and, and those types of things. And so, and we all have those, um, you know, women have a host of stereotypes they have to fight against. People of color have to fight against a host of stereotypes. Men have to fight against a host of stereotypes. We all have them, but we do that and we change who we are fundamentally in some cases to appease other people and only to find that we're even more frustrated because we had to be somebody different than we originally are. I, um, one of the things that I used to grapple with is I would find myself in situations because I was working so much, my time to socialize was very, very compartmentalized into small bite-sized chunks. I would hang out with folks, not because they were people that I was congruent with, but because these were the people that I could spend time with during those windows of time. But what would happen to me was I would spend time with these folks knowing that we're misaligned and it would eat me up, eat me up, eat me up. Then eventually I would get frustrated. And so then when I get frustrated, then I start acting out. I become rude. I become short. I become, I start arguing about different things. I make certain comments that I shouldn't make, you know, all of those, I don't know if they're passive aggressive, but these ways of my built up frustration kind of showing themselves until at some point that relationship is, is done. And you realize that all of that time that I spent trying to foster relationships that I knew weren't good in the first place, I could have been better, better served spending my time someplace else. And so that all of that is time that I lost. Now, I always had a good core group of friends um, that I spend time with, that I talk to on a regular basis, that are like my brothers and, you know, and in some cases like my sisters. And we're, we're really, really good friends, but I was spent, I was taking time away from them to try to foster these other relationships because maybe at those times that I was spending time, they didn't have time. So I spent time with these other folks that had time. All I'm saying to you is don't let yourself fall into, don't let yourself fall into that trap and think about who am I spending my time with and am, is my cup being filled up or am I pouring it out? Some people my best friend, he and I can talk, and I just feel so good about it. It's just, I, I walk away from it, and I'm like, I, I'm glad I had that conversation. In fact, any of my close friends, I feel really excited about having a conversation with them, even more excited afterwards. And I, I finish my conversation with them, then I talk my wife's ear off because I'm so excited about talking to these other folks. And then there's other people that I talk to, and they completely exhaust me. They're just exhausting. And they take, they're taking my energy and they're not providing the energy. Again, 
not because they're bad people, but because our frequencies are a little bit different. Um, and each of my friends are a little bit different. So the thing I'm, I guess the, the reason I, I say all this is just please take care of your time, cherish your time, put yourself around the people you care about the most before you lose some of them. Cause I've lost some of them as well. And, uh, you know, it doesn't feel good, but, but protect your time, protect your sense of who you are and don't ever go into a job, not able to be yourself. If you can't be yourself, it's not the right job. The job may pay a lot. You may make a lot of money. You may have a lot of power. You may have a lot of influence. You may have all of those types of things, but who you are does not tie, should not tie to the work that you do. The power that you have at work doesn't make you powerful. The intelligence that you display at work doesn't make you intelligent. If you're a powerful person, you're a powerful person. If you're an intelligent person, you're an intelligent person. If you're a witty person, you're a witty person. If people like you, people like you. And if people like you because of that job or people want to be around you because of that job, then those aren't your friends. Those are people that are looking for a mutual benefit from you, which is okay. But don't put yourself in a situation where you're where you overestimate what you're going to get out of that relationship. And I always say there's three types of friends. And I, I take this from, uh, from Tyler Perry. So I don't want to, I don't want any copyright infringement, but he talks about, you know, friends for the reason, friends for the season and really good friends. And, you know, when you look at your, your friends for the, for the reason, you know, your friends, because there's a specific thing that you're going to get out of being friends with that individual. A lot of times when you go and you network, these people aren't your friends at a networking event. These are people that you're networking with because at some point they may be able to help you because most of your friends aren't going to be people that you're expecting to get anything from. Um, and that's okay. You just know what they are. You take a look at friends for the season, you know, at different times in your life. I had friends that when I was in my 20s and I was partying like a rock star every night, we'd go and we'd hang out and we'd have these great relationships, have a bunch of fun have a whole bunch of stories to tell and all those types of things. But now we're not in the same page. We're just different people. We grew up, we became different. The differences we had then became bigger now. And it's just, they don't work anymore. But for that period of time, they work great. And so recognizing that you got the friends that are there for a season. And then you've got really good friends. And those are just people that even if you wanted to shake them, you couldn't. And I think the more friends you have, then maybe the less, the, the, more, the more tight friends you have, the harder it is to keep really good relationships with all of them and understanding what all their motives are. But my good friends, if I had to go, I always say, if I had to go bury a body, then those are the people that I call. If I had to go and do something that was sensitive or I needed to talk or I needed to better understand something, those are the people that I call because those are the individuals that have my back 100% of the time. I don't have many of them, but the ones that I have are, are really tight. And so as I, as I have continued to move down the path, the only people I spend time with are the ones that are going to uh, enrich, my, enrich my life. Because there's, there's a point in our lives where we realize that we have more years behind us than we have in front of us. And we don't necessarily know that to be true. But when you look at the stats, the stats will tell you something to that nature. And so then you start to really understand and harness and value that time. And folks, I just I urge you that even if you're you're not looking at retiring, if you're not, you know, we talk about living our best lives and we talk about living the types of lives we want to live. But you do that being around people and doing things that fill your cup. So keep your cup full. Uh, keep fighting the good fight. And I hope to hear from some of you. And again, please subscribe, like, and subscribe, like the channel and subscribe to the channel. If you find these videos helpful or interesting in any way, uh, I'm going to continue to put stuff, put up content, just kind of talking about my thoughts. And if there's something that you'd like to talk about, um, let me know. We'll, uh, we'll dig into it. And if, you want to have a more interactive dialogue, we can figure out a way to make that happen as well. Because again, I think it's really important for people to, to talk about these things. And I think one of the reasons we're so divided now as a country is because we have different people with differing opinions 
and people don't talk to each other. And so it becomes easier to, to build hostilities and, and draw lines in the sand. So some lines need to be drawn, but some don't. So anyway, have a good rest of your day. Uh, thank you for taking time and we will connect soon. Thank you and bye-bye now.